If you would like to read along with us today, we'll be reading from Jeremiah in the 17th chapter, beginning with the 5th verse, and we'll be reading down through the 8th verse of the 17th chapter of Jeremiah. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parts places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit." Uh, that's reading down through the 8th verse of uh, Jeremiah 17. I would like to base our thoughts upon what uh, a man said uh, that when our Lord was in the process of, process of healing him from his blindness. Uh, we can find in Mark 8, 24, And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Now, our Lord was in Bethsaida, uh, and they brought to him a man that, uh, that was blind. Now, this was somewhat of an anomalous occurrence. Uh, and I can't think of another time uh, that I remember reading that our Lord did not immediately heal someone or immediately give them sight or immediately allow them to be able to walk that were lame. Um, but this one occurrence that I am aware of, uh, it happened in two stages. That's what makes it a little different than the other miracles that we have recorded of Jesus Christ. And the first time uh, it says that uh, Jesus uh, spit in his eyes and laid his hands upon uh, the man's eyes and he said, what do you see now? Uh, and he looked up and he looked around and said, I see men as trees walking. Uh, and then Jesus again laid his hands upon his eyes uh, and then uh, he said, look again. Uh, and when he looked again, he saw clearly uh, as we would describe, no doubt, 2020 or better. But I would like to uh, mention and uh, for a thought for this message today, uh, what he said is when uh, he saw a man as trees walking. Now, in this lesson in Jeremiah, we see two sets of men as compared to trees. Uh, we see uh, those that are in a desert a situation uh, where it is, is as heath. That means the plant is stripped and destitute. We also see further, beginning in the seventh verse, it talks about the blessedness of a man uh, that uh, is as a tree planted by the waters. Uh, and then the blessingness of that as well. Now, we know that a plan is fixed. Uh, our Lord said you can judge a tree uh, by its uh, fruit, uh, what sort it is. Uh, so we can know, uh, I do believe, and I, I believe we can know, and I do, I do believe we can understand uh, that we can know when we are in the presence of other children of God. I know that I have uh, felt their presence many times as they have testified, as they have spoken, as they have preached, that I know uh, that the hand of God was upon them, and I know uh, that the Lord was directing them, and I know that they were children of God. Uh, we know that that is fixed. That's fixed when the Lord saves our soul. Uh, but it is a matter of choice where he chooses to dwell uh, as men, as trees, walking. Uh, he can choose to dwell in the desert or he can choose to dwell uh, by uh, the living waters. Uh, now, the direction of a man's trust determines his whole life. Uh, we can find in the fifth and sixth verses that I, I have just read to you, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord, for he shall be like the heath in the desert. Now, uh, what Jeremiah is uh, showing here uh, in these words is uh, that the man that trusteth in men, the man that trusteth in other things, uh, that makes his flesh his strength, 
Uh, he is as a man uh, that is dwelling in a uh, arid a desert place. Uh, and then we can find verses that in the seventh uh, verse, blessed is a man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Uh, for he shall be as a tree uh, planted by the waters. Now, uh, the current events that, have, that we have around us today have taught us about, more than anything, about ourselves. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the preliminaries, uh, this is something that is foreign to all of us. Uh, this is something that uh, I don't know that churches uh, have been uh, closed uh, for the most part since uh, the Civil War. Uh, this is something that is uh, really odd for all those that are living today. Now, I, I said earlier that we can glean good things even from very, very bad situations. I have in my life as well when things were the most difficult for me, were the times of great learning uh, for me, uh, were the times where I truly uh, grew in the Lord. Uh, I, I, I don't grow much unless uh, things are difficult for me. I don't grow much unless uh, things are uh, I am being faced with things that are very, very difficult in situations that uh, when I uh, come, as the saying goes, uh, to the end of my rope and have no uh, where to go. Uh, but uh, during those times of testing is when we uh, have the opportunity to grow in the Lord if we'll just let the Lord uh, do that in our life and the process that that takes uh, for us. Now, I know there's anxiety about the whole situation. I have felt some anxiety. Uh, I realize that we probably all have. There are many unknowns about what is uh, going on today. Uh, we don't know uh, when this will end. Uh, we hear estimations, but uh, that's all that they are. Uh, we don't know how long this is going, the duration of it is going to last. If it's going to last weeks, if it's going to last months, if it's going to last a year or more. Uh, we just do not know that. Uh, it just shows the frailty of life. Uh, and it just shows uh, how that uh, we uh, cannot trust uh, those things. Now, some of the anxiety that you might be feeling uh, and that I might have felt as well, uh, it might have been displaced trust. Uh, where or in what have you placed your trust in? Uh, we need to search our own hearts. Uh, as long as uh, there is a plenty of rain, it seems well. Uh, and you can uh, set your tree down a lot of different places. Uh, and, and as long as there uh, is a rain, and that's what we're talking about, what Jeremiah is talking about in these uh, verses here, uh, as, as long as there's rain, then you say, well, I'm fine. I have need of nothing. Uh, then uh, all is well. Uh, but uh, it talks in the 8th verse about a year of drought. I believe that we will probably, uh, all of us, look back on 2020 uh, in our lives uh, and uh, tell our children and grandchildren, definitely this was a year of drought. In time, uh, in, in this time, uh, is a very, very difficult situation. Uh, and it is bringing hardships upon uh, many people. Now, uh, as the man in the desert, uh, they, they might, uh, that man might get some rain. Or you might not choose to set your uh, tree um, by the water. Uh, and, and you're depending upon the rains to come. Uh, but one day, uh, whether it's this occasion or another occasion, one day uh, where you're going to have a drought in your life, and you're not going to have enough water to sustain you. And that's what uh, Jeremiah is trying to uh, get across. Now, uh, what have you put your trust in? Uh, say you put your trust in the money that you have, uh, the, the wealth that you have. Uh, just like the a man that told the Lord, he says, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tear down uh, these barns, I'm going to build uh, bigger barns, and I'm going to take my ease. And our Lord says, uh, tonight thou soul shall be required of thee. Uh, see, he was putting his trust in his wealth. Less than or about a month ago, uh, most people were probably the richest they had ever been. 
uh, we were in a, the greatest economic boom in the history probably of our country. And it did not look like at that time that it was ever going to end. Uh, pretty much like probably the 1920s um, before the Great Depression. Uh, but and then less than a month, uh, you can uh, look at your 401ks or your IRAs or, or wherever that you have your money and you're going to see probably a lot less in it today than you saw a month ago. What a difference a month can make. Uh, but in a life, what a difference a day can make. Uh, now, you're saying, well, I don't have a whole lot of money saved up, but I, I've got a good job. Uh, and less than a, a month ago or about a month ago, uh, unemployment was as low as it had uh, uh, just about ever been. Uh, there were just about probably more people working than ever had. Uh, you could go out just about anywhere and get a job if you wanted one. Uh, 3% gets to, down to the people that probably uh, do not uh, want one. Uh, now, I, I heard an estimate the other day, if this, uh, if this goes on like it's going, that uh, it could get up to 35%. That's one in three people uh, that will be out of work or more. Uh, and possibly that's a conservative estimate. So uh, a lot of people place their trust in their jobs. And then when those jobs fail, then what are you going to trust then? Or whether you placed your trust in money. Uh, when your money's gone, then what are you going to trust then? Uh, what about your health? A lot of people uh, were doing well, uh, and, and many people had no problems at all less than a month ago. And now uh, thousands upon thousands of those people are, are, are sick right now, or, uh, and even thousands of people have already uh, perished from this virus. Uh, how soon things in this life can turn on us. How soon uh, things in this life, and our Lord warned about that. He warned his disciples, and he warned as he taught, do not trust this world or anything of it. Do not trust men. Do not trust wealth. Do not trust jobs. Do not trust health. Those things We say, well, I've got my home. Uh, just before this virus hit, there was a terrible tornado that come through uh, parts of Tennessee enough to where our president even come in and, and, and viewed things. It seems distant history now with all this other that has uh, took its place in the news. And I heard of a man uh, that uh, he was in, in Cookville and uh, he lost his home and everything uh, that he had. He also has also since contracted uh, this virus uh, that is upon us. So uh, what are you going to put your trust in? It says that if you put your trust in man or, or the strength of man or anything else, you're going to be like that man that's in the desert. You might fare well for a while, um, but soon it's got, the rain is going to stop and you're going to find yourself in trouble. Now, you may say this is negative. Well, if you want to continue in the desert, it is negative. If that's where you choose to dwell as God's people, uh, it is negative. Uh, but we don't have to dwell there. And there is nothing saying that we have to be in the desert. Our Lord uh, told us to find the waters, uh, find the place where we may be refreshed, find the place where we may prosper, find the place where we may uh, grow in the Lord. So I want to talk about something positive now. I've talked about the negative. I've talked about all that, uh, that, that we are witnessing here. Uh, but we know that we are children of God. We know that we have a better place to go. We know that we have uh, a God that dwells within us. We know that we have a Savior that has saved us and give us an earnest of His Spirit uh, that has put the love of God in our hearts uh, and he's established our going. He's put us on a rock. And he's promised us eternal life. We know all of these things. The devil cannot touch that. The devil cannot do anything to separate us uh, from the love of God. Uh, so uh, it's a, still an optimistic place. And uh, what uh, Jeremiah is saying here uh, versus the man that uh, is as a tree planted by the waters. It says that this man, as a tree, spreadeth out her roots by the water. Shall not see when heat cometh, 
not affected at all. You know, brothers and sisters, if our trust uh, was not displaced, if our trust was uh, where it ought to be, altogether and completely with the Lord, uh, nothing doubting, uh, we tell the lost, trust the Lord, trust the Lord when they're seeking Him in, in no doubt they should be. And that's what they ought to be doing. That's what the scriptures teach. But brothers and sisters, we ought to heed what we are telling, even the lost. Uh, we ought to trust the Lord. D did our Lord not say, do I not know what you need? Do I not know uh, that uh, what uh, you need to sustain you even before you ask? Uh, do I not take care of the birds that fall to the ground? Do I not know every hair of your head uh, by number? Do I not know everything about you? And will I not take care of you as a father takes care of his children? Will I not uphold you? Will I not strengthen you? Will I not bless you? Pack down and running over. If you will just let me. I saw what he's saying here of uh, this tree that is planted by the waters. Uh, when uh, the drought comes, he's not affected by it. Uh, when the drought, uh, he's not at all tested by it because he is uh, living um, by the living water. Now, shall not worry in the year of the drought. Now, brothers and sisters, I know there's concern that there needs to be uh, concern. There needs to be a judicial uh, used in our lives, and we need to be prudent in what we do and where we go. And I do believe we need to distance ourselves at this time. Um, but I do believe that we should put our trust in the Lord. I do believe that we should uh, lean not upon our own understanding, um, but trust the Lord in everything. If we'll do that, we don't worry about the year of the drought. We don't worry about the things around us. Now, to get a, a beautiful picture, and I grew up on, on a farm, and there was a, there was a large creek that ran uh, through part of it. And I remember the big trees that uh, were on the side of the creek. They grew faster than the trees that were out in the field. Uh, and you could cut one down and look at the, uh, look at the rings of it. Uh, and it says, and, and I was reading, the rings of a tree, uh, whether they are large or small, is directly related uh, to how much moisture uh, that tree receives. If you want to cut down one of those trees out in the field somewhere, uh, you can uh, go by and look back at, uh, as the scientists say, uh, look back at the years when there was a drought, and you can point to the ring on that tree and say, here, uh, you see uh, how small the ring is? That year was a, was a drought season. Or you see this uh, this year and point out another and that it can you can tell the weather by that tree but the trees that are planted by the water you can't do that so much uh, because they are never lacking in water they are in never need of those things uh, that that tree that's out in the field somewhere uh, when the drought comes it struggles and it, it has to shoot out further and further and further seeking uh, moisture uh, so that it may maintain, may maintain maintain itself but those that are in the desert need to seek an oasis the Israelites after they had uh, been taken over across the Red Sea uh, a few days there, uh, probably four days, and they were thirsting, and they were uh, thought they were dying of thirst. Uh, and we could find that they came upon a place, and what a thrill, uh, no doubt it must have been when they were in a parched desert, and they looked and they saw this oasis uh, that was just ahead of them. They looked and saw all of the greenery. They looked and saw, and, it, and an oasis looked so out of place in an arid a desert because there is water there. And there was a place called Elam, uh, and we can find uh, there is where God uh, directed his uh, children of Israel to go and to camp. And it says in Elam, this oasis, there were 12 springs and 70 palms. 
Why 12 springs? Because there were 12 tribes. You see how a God provides in abundance? He, he provided a spring for every tribe of the children of Israel. He was showing them, yes, I will provide for you. And it says they camped there near the waters. Brothers and sisters, that's what we need to do. We need to camp there near the waters. The waters the living waters of our Lord, that He uh, can refresh us, that He can uh, help us, that He uh, will be with us even in times of severe drought uh, when we can uh, take our great thirst and drink Him in and know that uh, we are near Him. As that song says, and like a tree planted by the waters, I shall not be moved. I refuse uh, to look around me. I refuse to look around uh, and to let that get the better of me. I refuse to uh, try my best not to be afraid uh, of the things around me. Uh, we don't need to be looking around us. Uh, we don't need to continually be dwelling on these things, but we need to Look up, as the psalmist said, I will look up unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And another song, O Christ, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Uh, let's look for the water. Uh, and let's plant ourselves there. Uh, let's put down roots there. Uh, and let's dwell there. Uh, so we're not uh, in trouble. We're not all anxious. Uh, we're not all troubled and uh, confused about what is going on. But we put our trust in the Lord. And we'll be as that tree. It says it will uh, bring uh, forth green leaves even uh, in the year of the drought. Uh, and we shall still then yield fruit. Continually. I, I, I pray that the Lord will help us all. I pray that He will help you and strengthen you. But I do pray that this time uh, we will heed this opportunity uh, to, to more fully put our trust in the Lord. Not in our riches, not in our jobs, not in our health, not in our homes. None of those things. But just simply as a child put our trust in the Lord and, and leave it with Him. Uh, we know that whatever happens in our life, uh, this is just our life. We know that whatever happens to us as we are here, uh, as Paul said, the troubles and trials of this present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, let us not uh, just take hold of this thing uh, as the world is, but let us let our light shine in this darkest time uh, for many people. Uh, let our light shine to uh, the darkness of the world and show them what it is uh, to trust the Lord and show them that we have something to hold on to. Uh, thank you, and I pray this will be a good Lord's day for you. Amen.